Hello and welcome to today's edition, our special edition of the family service, where it's something if I would sometimes say, if you're young in heart, or you're two, or you're 92, or even 102. Yes. Um, so welcome. And we've got a special program. We usually say that, which is hopefully true. And uh, different things today, which we're going to be looking at. And of course, I've got one or two of my friends here with us today. And I'm going to show you some money today. Money. Here we are. Here's a wee glimpse. I wonder if you know what this is about. I'll tell you that. This exciting £10 note. What is that about? We'll find out later in the programme. And we're also going to look at some quite amazing pictures today. Pictures which reflect what is going on at this time, which we speak. Somebody may look at this picture, at uh, this programme, years later, maybe. And, uh, and then the pictures and everything else will be in history. But now, as I continue just to have this special flag behind me as my background, the flag is, of course, Scotland. That's a Scottish flag. And, of course, next to it is the Ukrainian flag because we're continuing to remember this time. And it's important to do that as we pray for all the people in Ukraine and the people now we're speaking about every week it gets more. This is now third week in Tet, fourth week coming on to of, uh, millions, millions of people, children, mums, even some dads, of course, uh, older ones. Of course, we know that the uh, younger, uh, men are staying behind in the Ukrainian, but their families are flooding, literally flooding into the what we would call the Western world. And we'll hear a bit about that today because we're going to touch on that a little bit. And, uh, so that's just a, a little summary, but also the wonderful news that Jesus is alive and that he loves you and that we're not on our own. Because as my friend Mickey, who is as usual here with me, come on, say hi, Mickey. Come on. Yes, good morning, everybody. God bless you. Yes, of course. Always remember. Always remember. Well, I don't suppose if you look at me, you can't forget. Always remember, Jesus says, I will never leave you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mickey. Okay. Oh, have you? Well, that's very interesting this morning. Because some of you will know, Mickey has actually got a friend from Russia. Okay, well, we'll see Michaela. Okay, we'll see Michaela in a little bit, but we're going to just start with a word of prayer. So let's, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. That wonderful promise that you'll never leave us. And Lord, we, we just thank you for that. Thank you. You care for us. Thank you that you'll never cast us away and you hold us with your hand. And so, Lord, we come again to you today. We ask your blessing. I ask your blessing, all those who are looking in. May they know joy, peace, and indeed, Lord, if there's anxiety or fear, may it go, because you've said, do not be afraid. And to bring your cares to me. And so, Lord, we do that today. We give ourselves to you, and we ask your blessing right now, as we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to put the special light on. That's it. The shadow a bit. Okay, so we've got uh, one or two good songs. And this one this morning, I'm going to get Fred to help me with this one. And that's right. This song I'm going to do. It's, oh, look at that. I'll see that in a minute. Oh, you seeing that ahead. All right, I'll put that down at the moment. Right. Yes, that's a, a little promise. I'll show you about that in a moment. But one of the wonderful truths that we know is that not very long, not very long, especially when Jesus says, when you see the things that we are seeing now happen, he says, look, I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. So this is a, a song, a chorus, when we know that Jesus is coming, and today, in a story I'm going to share with you, we're going to meet how a father ran 
to meet his son. And I think at the moment, yeah, I think all the angels are all standing, all God's angels are all standing there and they're waiting, they're getting ready for the Lord Jesus himself to come. And oh, wow, what a day that will be. And when we see, we see Jesus come to appear on the clouds, and we start running towards him, and then something will start to happen as we do that. And that's where we get this third verse, I think it is. Look, it goes, when Jesus comes suddenly, the Bible says, we're going to rise, rise, rise to meet my Jesus. And we're actually going to whoosh. In fact, one of the expressions in the Bible that says when Jesus comes and that will happen, it says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that's like for you scientists out there, like a nanosecond, something like that. OK, that means very, very quick. Right. OK, so here we go. Come on, Fred. Come on, you can help me with this one. I'll just do it to um, start. It goes, I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. When he comes, hallelujah, when he comes. And then we go and do the actions. Every eye shall then behold him. Every eye shall then behold him. Every eye shall then behold him. He comes, hallelujah, when he comes. Every knee shall bow before him. Every knee shall bow before him. Every knee shall bow before him when he comes, hallelujah, when he comes. Don't forget, you did it. I'm going to rise, rise, rise to meet my Jesus. I'm going to rise, rise, rise to meet my Jesus. I'm going to rise, rise, rise to meet my Jesus. I'm going to rise, rise Rise to meet my Jesus when he comes, hallelujah, when he comes. <laughs> Oops, okay, that was good. Let's do it. And oh, yes, there's one more verse. No, that's, yes, no, that's right. Okay, so do you want to join in? Some of you, if you're young or young in heart and you're fit and you like to do exercises or go to the gym, why don't you come and do this? I'm going to run. Okay, have a go. Come on, Fred, you join in. Let's all do it. I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. When he comes, hallelujah, when he comes. Every eye shall then behold him. Every eye shall then behold him. Every eye. Till then behold him when he comes, hallelujah, when he comes. Every knee shall bow before him. Every knee shall bow before him. Every knee shall bow before him when he comes, hallelujah, when he comes. And then let's just imagine this last part of this. Is Jesus coming? It's not Jesus is coming. Then we're running towards him, and then suddenly, we suddenly we're going to. I'm going to rise, rise, rise to meet my Jesus. I'm going to rise, rise, rise to meet my Jesus. I'm going to rise, rise, rise to meet my Jesus. When he comes, hallelujah, when he comes, woo, I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. I'm going to run, run, run to meet my Jesus. When he comes, hallelujah, when he comes. Good. Well, that was a, I hope you enjoyed that one. Let's just have one more before we go into one of our great stories today and this is this is a good one 
And this is knowing that our God, he is so big. You know, the Bible tells us he flung the stars into space with a breath of his mouth. Wow. He is so great and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. And we say that at the end. So we go like this, we go. My God is so big, big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the skies are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. He made the trees, he made the seas, he made the elephants too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. And just the first verse again, and of course I was singing the words big, for the first verse we've got the words great. So we'll do great this time, okay? My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the skies are his handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. It's true. It is. It really is. Yes. Okay, thank you. Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know you just like to say things. Right. Okay, well, we're going to go into, uh, well, we have been looking at over these last few weeks, we've been having a peek at a special meeting that Pastor Pauline, or Pastor Bear, as we say, has been doing and also telling a story. Now, that story has been the story of a lady called Mary Celessa. Now, if you've been looking the, uh, the last few weeks, uh, Pastor Pauline has been telling of this story, but last week, because they were out uh, on the road and we couldn't hear the sound very well, I just had a, brought some of the pictures up about the story of Mary Slesser. And I've showed you some of the pictures where she was born. Excuse me. This was in Dundee, where she had a very, very bad background. And her father treated her very lovely, sometimes throwing her out of the house. But then one day a lady told to her when she was being really, really naughty, stealing biscuits and cookies and different things, as they say. And the lady really told her, she said, you end up like this, you will end up in a very bad place. Which the lady was very actually strong with her and said that really, if she carried on doing sinful and very bad things, there's a place of punishment, which will happen to everybody who turns away from God. And of course, Mary, she was absolutely horrified by this. And maybe the lady wasn't saying it in a very kind way in what she said. But Mary realized that she had sinned and done things wrong. And she asked the Lord Jesus to forgive her and come and live in her life. And her heart was changed. Suddenly, she just wanted to do what's right. Because when Jesus comes into our life, we change. And that's a sign that Jesus has come in. Instead of wanting to do things wrong and to lie and steal, we want to help people. We want just to, and we want people to know Jesus. That's really what happens. And we begin to learn about him. So that's important. It really is. So Mary did that. And she realized that the, the children round about where she lived Dundee needed to hear about Jesus. And so she began going around, having Sunday school classes and telling people about Jesus. And you see this picture 
where some of the boys didn't like what she was doing, so they began to threaten her and shout at her. And, and Mary, instead of running away, she just stood there praying. And as you can see, what happened here with that boy with a stone, and he actually hit her head with that stone, but she still didn't run away and she didn't cry. She just prayed. Well, when that happened, the boys realized she was brave and courageous, and they admired that. And they said, Mary, you're something special. Tell us. We would like you to tell us what, how would you, I was so brave, why are you so courageous? And of course, she told them about Jesus. And she says, Look, as they wanted to help her, come to the church, she said. <laughs> and they are, How would you like to go by your church and somebody outside is a whip to whip you go in? But Mary stopped them doing that. She said, You don't, no, 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 that's not right to do that. So anyway, all these young guys, as far as you understand, they all became Christians. Well, Mary continued telling people about Jesus, but then she heard about a country called Calabar in Nigeria. And with her mum's permission and, pr and prayer, she eventually went out there. And that's what we heard last week. And this is where we kind of up to some of the adventures that Mary got up to in Calabar. Very, very exciting. And we heard about how she rescued twins and different things. Now, I'm going to go over now to hopefully you can still see me yeah um the story that we're looking at in pastor pauline with bit there and we're going to carry on this story as pastor pauline continues to share this exciting story so here we go i'll just put this on the screen and yeah and so whenever she lived in a hut like that. She took off her shoes and put on African dress. And whenever they heard that twins were going to be born, they'd say, run, Ma, run, quick, quick, quick. She'd run. And before they could kill the twins, she'd grab them and say, I'll take care of them. And so in her house, she had 50 sets of twins. That's 100 children, which she looked after. And she, be she became their mama. She became their mum. And... They, she lived there for many, many years, and bit by bit, she showed that God was with her. In fact, do you see this panther? He's like a black lion. One night, she woke up suddenly, and the panther had one of her babies in its mouth, so she banged it on the head. She wasn't afraid, because God said, I'll be with you. And so she, she smashed the panther's nose, and he ran away, and the baby was saved. And another time, she was traveling in a canoe, they had big, long canoes there with lots of um, people manning the canoe. And up out the middle of the river popped, let me find him, popped a hippopotamus. Have you heard of hippopotamus? Yes, here he is. A big hippo. Now, a hippo's got a great big mouth, very strong teeth. And the hippo actually can break a boat in half. But he popped up, but Mary thought, ha-ha, I've got a saucepan. <laughs> So she grabbed the saucer and bashed it on the head and it didn't tip, the, tip up the canoe because if they'd all fallen in the river, there were crocodiles there. See, Mary knew God was with her all the time and every time something dangerous happened, God showed her what to do. And she stayed there for many, many years until finally, look, you see this? That's actually a dead body. The son of the king died. And so everybody was on the war path. And Mary thought, they're all going to start drinking and fighting. What can I do? So she thought, I know. And she had old clothes that people had sent her. So she dressed up the dead body in the best clothes, a nice suit and trousers, and stuck him on the chair. And everyone thought that was wonderful. And they forgot all about drinking and fighting. But when it came time to bury him, they were choosing which people to bury with him alive, which is a terrible thing to do. But Mary said, no, 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 you can't do that. And she talked and she talked and she talked. And finally, they had a funeral and nobody else was buried. You see, Mary, because God was with her, changed the whole, the whole of that country. It became peaceful. They stopped eating each other. They stopped warring. They stopped drinking. They stopped killing twins. 
And listen, boys and girls and mums and dads, if God speaks to you, God will be with you and he'll help you do what he tells you to do. And you can actually change other people's lives because now people there could live in peace. They weren't afraid of the demons. They were there. They were very peaceful and they came to love Jesus and they changed completely. And how did it begin? It began with God speaking to Mary. Same as God spoke to Samuel and God can speak to you. And when you read the Bible and when you pray, say, God, speak to me. What do you want me to do when I grow up? And he will give you an idea. So let's pray together. Father in heaven, I thank you that you speak today. I pray you will speak to everyone who is listening. And if you want to send them to go somewhere to tell others, pray you'll give them the idea. And I thank you that they don't need to be afraid because you never leave them. I'm always with you. Fear not, says God. So why don't you ask God to start to speak to you and give you an idea what he wants you to do with your life. Amen and amen. God bless you. Victory Bears coming to finish off now with a couple of songs. We'll wave our flags and rejoice because God amen. is alive. He is risen. He is risen, Victory Bear. Hallelujah. So we'll just have a look at this. So this is a bit of fun. Um, Fear not, I'm with you. That's do right. to others what you want them to do for you. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll just have a quick look at this. Yes. What a wonderful this is Victory Bear, Victory George. God calling. That's why we're doing Victory Fight with Children. God called that child, Amy Slessor. And tonight, this afternoon, in fact, we're thinking about Afghanistan and the children in Afghanistan. Yes. Who will go? If you're watching Victory Side for Children, there are they're, they're over 3.5 million children in Afghanistan who haven't heard about Jesus. Yes. Why wouldn't you take up the chance or the challenge and say, yes, Lord, I will go. Amen. Right? And if you, if, if, if you feel that talking in your spirit just let us know we will pray for you we will support you in prayer and with material things so that you can fulfill the assignment praise god on the victory side on the victory. this is their theme song which i really like it's a great song He's a person who plays the piano, an incredible musician. <laughs> He's getting his bear suit. He's got a tail. Not even his Jimmy Bear's tail. He's saying hello. He's saying hello. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Timmy Bear. <laughs> okay, there we go. Whoops, it is. I'm going to stop that before it comes in. There we go. That's right. Oops, stop that. Okay. Um, just before we finish that story of uh, Mary Celessa, and uh, let's just go back into these pictures I was showing you. And as I said, some of these pictures here. But what I want to show you now uh, is I'll just go ahead of that. And, uh, that was Mary Slissa's house, by the way, that the natives they built for her there. And 
these were just some of the children, as Pauline, Pastor Pauline said there. They had 50, over 50 sets of children, incredible, that she rescued. And there's another picture of a place in Calabar where it all took place. And that was a part of the story that Pastor Pauline told today. But what I want to do just, uh, and there's a challenge. As they said there at the end, who will go? God is looking for people, young and old, who are willing to serve him. Yes, here or in the country where you're living, to be willing to tell people about Jesus and to pray. And then as you have the opportunity to go into other places to tell about him. But what I just wanted to show you, I said at the beginning, was this £10 note. Because in Scotland, Mary Slessor is very famous. She is one of our, we call a her heroine. A heroine. She going out there doing such incredible work. Again, as Pastor Pauline said, that um, Mary Slessor, she changed the nation. She did. Then when they were going out to war, as you heard the stories, I'm not sure there'll be another story next week, but that when they were going out to war, there was these big tribes and the army of even Great Britain was there, thousands of people, and they waited because the tribe says, Well, if Mary Slessor comes, we will wait to hear what she says. So the army, the British army, had to wait for Mary Slessor to come. And she came with her knitting needles and she listened and sat there. Again, it looked as though she was very brave, but inside in the story, she was always really trembling. But she had the wisdom, God gave her the wisdom to give a solution. Uh, all these warriors, we said, yes, Mary is lesser. Yes, we will agree with what she says. And so she helped to save a whole nation because of her love for the Lord Jesus. Incredible story. So that's why it, these uh, pound notes um, with her picture on it were made. And on the, on the other side of the 10 pound note is this. This is a picture of Calabar. And the different places and the rivers and the, and the tribes that she went and she worked with. Just amazing. And as we just come out, let me see if I can do this now. Um, there we go. Come back. And I have an actual one of these. To add up. They're not. You can't get them anymore now. They're not printed now. So this is one of those becoming rare. This is one of these special pen pound notes that I've got, which I'm really pleased to have. And as I, as I showed you, there is the picture. I can just about show it you before it disappears. Right, there it is. And the, uh... so that is great. She was one of these in the book of the Bible, the book of Hebrews, we have a whole list of people who did wonderful things for God, who were famous. And I'm sure in heaven, there's many books written. The Bible tells us there's many books which are written in heaven. The most important book, by the way, is the book they call the Lamb's Book of Life. And in that book are all the names of those who have trusted Jesus, which is the most important book of all, to know that our names are written in that book. But there's records of everything. The Bible tells us every even the things we've been thinking inside. Amazing. Well, our phones are getting like that now, aren't they? If you've got a smartphone, they seem to know what you're thinking because you're talking about something, the next minute you've got an advert. Amazing. So these things we can see. You know, God, well, he has, if you like, all the video cameras all over the place. Not that really. He's got his holy angels and they watch over us. But there's also the bad ones as well. There's the, there, as you saw in Africa, there's all the demons and the witchcraft and the black magic stuff, which is terrible and things like. And so these things are very important not to get involved with. You have to be very careful. Things like Ouija boards and practices that uh, some meditation when you start thinking about emptying your mind and letting extra forces come in you mustn't do things like that no 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 the bible says jesus works with us and we always have three choices very important things to remember because you must always put jesus first and not get caught up with other things so as i said it was a very exciting uh, life that mary lived 
And as we said, her name will begin one of those books in heaven, the heroes or a heroine of faith. And I'm sure that a book's been written about your life and my life. And but the wonderful thing is, if we sometimes think, oh, dear, what about all the bad things? Will that all be done? Seen? Well, not if we've trusted Jesus. That's the important thing. Jesus cleanses us from all of our sin so that the Bible uses these terms. There is no condemnation. There's no sense of fear because of the Jesus takes that away. And when he comes our life, it's like we've not sinned. It's Jesus cleanses us. So there's no fear. That's why. Again, Pastor Pauling was saying that word, and I want to say that again today to you. There's no fear when we trust in Jesus. But if we refuse him, then we have to face up to the fact that all the things we've done wrong, everything has been known. And so this is why it's so important to trust Jesus. Well, before we go into our special story today, and uh, I'm sure you're going to find it interesting, we'll just have one more song. And I must remember, because sometimes I forget, let's go back into our share screen and, oops, there we go, to get our song. And this is, I like this song here, which is, it's what God says about you, because you are special. You are special today, and God loves you very much. So this is a lovely song. It goes like this. It goes, I'm special because God has loved me, for he gave the best thing that he had to save me. His own son, Jesus, crew, see fight to take the blame for all the bad things I have done. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so much. I know I don't deserve anything. Help me feel your love right now. To know deep in my heart that I'm your special friend. Because there's a second verse, which is not really written there, but it's very easy. Yes. And the second verse, we said of singing, I'm special. Yes, you're special, Nikki, you are. Uh, we sing, you're special. So I'm going to point to Mickey. Yes, and you can point to me, Mickey. Yes, that's right, I'm special. And, and then we can point to the camera as well for people who are looking in because God wants them to know that they're special. Yes, they are, Mickey. You tell. Oh, yes, I want to tell you that you're special. Yes, that's right. Okay, so this time we sing You're Special. Okay, ready? Goes, you're special because God has loved you for he gave the best thing that he had to save you his own son jesus crucified to take the blame for all the bad things you have done that's right Nikki. thank you jesus thank you lord for loving us so much I know we don't deserve anything. Help us feel your love right now to know deep in our hearts that we're your special friends. That's right. Can we do it one more time? Okay, let's just do it one more time. I'm special. I'm special because God has loved me. For he gave the best thing that he had to save me. His own son, Jesus, crucified to take the blame for all the bad things I have done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so much. 
I know I don't deserve anything. Help me feel your love right now to know deep in my heart that I'm your special friend. Yes, one more time, you're special. You're special because God has loved you for he gave the best thing that he had to save you. His own son, Jesus, crucified to take the blame for all the bad things you have done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much. I know we don't deserve anything. Help us feel your love right now to know deep in our hearts that we're your special friend. Okay, we're his special friends. So Jesus says, you are my friends. If you do what I ask you to do. And that's, that's really basically trusting him, to trust him in every part of our lives. Right, so we're going to go now into our special story today. And I did start off with this. Uh, let me just, let's go back and have a look at that. Okay. God wants us, if you remember last week, we were mentioned about Eric Liddell and different ones. And when we follow Jesus, sometimes we get discouraged. We think, oh, it's so difficult. It's so hard. But God wants us to never give up. And I came across this picture and I thought, yes, that's right. This little mouse to avoid the snares of the enemy, which would be the mum or the dad, uh, you know, <laughs> perhaps uh, and of course if you get mice well enemies to the mice of course but the, this mouse is very wise and so it puts a helmet on to protect himself very wise because even when we follow Jesus the Bible tells us we are got to put on our helmet yes to protect our mind from all the bad things the thoughts now sometimes like as I said, the enemy can put into our minds. Sometimes he does. He says, oh, nobody cares about you. You're not very nice. You can't do anything. And he puts all these lies. Don't follow Jesus. You know, all these lies. He tries to get them into our minds. So we get discouraged. So we need to protect our minds. Very important. Well, we're going to go now to a story which some of you all know. A story of two sons. And the Lord Jesus told this story just for people to understand how important they are or how important we are, how important we are to God. And so Jesus tells a story about this man, big farmer, and he had two sons. And of course, they worked with him. But as the younger son grew up, he thought, I don't like this. Maybe it's, I don't like this work is too hard. I don't like standing here, being on this farm all the time. I want to enjoy myself. And he knew that his father had promised him when he got to a certain age that he would be given an, what we call an inheritance, which is a, a sum of money which he could have. Now, often, when we receive sums of money from our father or mother or something like that, that can be when people get a lot older and maybe their father and mother have died. Well, this occasion, this farmer had promised them when they got to a certain age, they could have what they call their inheritance. So this younger guy, the younger son, he could not wait. He could not wait till he could get all this money. So he put up with working on the farm and all the hard work he had to do, but he didn't like it, really. He was, he was really lazy, really. And so he came the time when he says, Dad, you promised me when I get to a certain age, you would give me my inheritance. But, well, son, you don't need it now. Work with on the farm. And later on, Dad, I want it now. Give it me now. You said you made a promise. And so his dad, because he had made a promise, and it's always important to keep our promises, he gave 
his son the money that he had promised him. Now, of course, probably as you can see in the background there, all the rest of the family would be very upset at what, what he was going to do because his dad, he realized, he realized that his son may become very selfish, very proud, and, and what he would get up to when he left the home. And of course, he couldn't stop him because he had free will, he had free choice. And that's like our Heavenly Father. God gives to us a free choice. That's, that's the amazing way that God has made us with a choice. So this younger son, he thought, this is great. Look at this. Now I'm really going to live. I'm going to have a great time. So off he went. And the Bible tells us in the story that he went as far away as he could. He went far away from his own home. So they wouldn't see what he was going to up to because maybe he still had a bit of a conscience about the way he was going to live. So off he went and his father looked after him and his father loved him, even though his son had become very proud, very boastful, very selfish. He still loved him, even though he become very sinful, his son. Well, off his son went and that's what. The Bible tells us he went to this far country and he went to another land. Of course, he'd see now all these amazing sights he'd never seen before. He'd see palaces, coliseums, music, oh, all kinds of things. And of course, he would start making friends. Well, when these people saw this stranger as he was to them, but when he saw that he had money and he wanted to enjoy himself, would flock around him oh yes we will help you have a good time we just know the right places to go so the bible says he went into what they call riotous living riotous living which means it was pretty bad what he was doing yes he would maybe go as i said to some of the coliseums and sometimes in those days and there were some pretty awful things happening in these games that they would people lose their lives and things. But then also, nighttime, oh yes, he would be doing things which his family would be very ashamed of and horrified in what he was doing, probably going with many different ladies and other different things which would be very wrong. And so he thought, though, he was having a good time. This was real life. I could do this. Well, the Bible says the pleasures in sin, which is really what he was doing, last only for a short time. But he carried on while he had the money and he had his friends. Wow, this was brilliant. It was almost like everybody loved him and liked him. Well, they do if you're given the money all the time. But as the Bible tells us, he was all these people. But sadly, maybe also somebody robbed him, which is probably the case at one point. And that often happens. We sometimes say these words, a fool and his money are soon parted. Well, it wasn't all that long. All this money it had, its inheritance, it was gone. It wasn't there. Maybe he woke up in the morning in a strange place and his money wasn't there. Oh, we thought, well, yeah. I've got all these friends. I'll ask them to help me. So along he would go to some of his friends and he says, uh, you know, can you lend me some shekels? Can you lend me some, uh, uh, you know, or some money? I I've run out of money at the moment, but I'll get some more. It's OK. Well, no, he said suddenly his so-called friends weren't his friends anymore. And when they knew he hadn't got money and he couldn't look after them, they also had the same problem in that they were selfish. They wanted just to think of themselves and not think about others. So, of course, this the, it, 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 the son became very sad. I thought, what am I going to do? So he tried to get a job. And, and, he, and, and then the Bible tells us, or Jesus tells us in the story, that the land he was in had a famine. There was a shortage of food. And as you can see here, some of the animals would be dying and lack of food. And, and it became 
a terrible situation. And so it, like, he tried to get a job, but nobody would employ him. Well, he was a stranger, he was a foreigner. And no, no, they weren't going to look after strangers or foreigners, they're going to look after themselves. So he was in a really bad way. So eventually he managed to find somebody who needed someone to feed the pigs. And nobody wanted to do that job. Nobody wanted to do that job. So the guy says, look, I'll let you can feed the pigs. You can eat some of the food that's there. And uh, that'll just keep you going. So this boy who had all of the trappings of luxury and money, now he had nothing. Suddenly it was taken away from him. And he was doing something which he hated doing, which was feeding the pigs. And he was so hungry. He says he could even want to eat some of the husks that the pigs themselves were eating as a means of keeping himself alive. And he became more and more miserable. We don't know quite how long it took. And the Bible says he came to his senses. Maybe as he looked at the awful stuff he had to eat, he suddenly realized, he realized how foolish he had been. And he decided, this is terrible. He began to realize that he'd turned away from his father. He'd sinned. He had probably, as we said, done lots of other things which he would be ashamed of. And so he began to realize how foolish he had been. In fact, the Bible says he came to his senses, which is an important thing for all of us when we realize how far away we've gone from what God wants us to do. So there he was. And then he decided. He said, I know what I'm going to do. Because in my father's house, servants are treated far, far better than what I'm being treated now. I'll go back. Maybe my father would receive me, but not as a son, but even I could just be a servant. Probably he would know what I've been doing. Yes, he would. I tried to block that out of my mind. He would know how bad I've been. And of course, what I'm wearing, <laughs> my clothes were so beautiful, but now they're in racks. But I'm going to go back to my father thinking that his father would be so ashamed of him and not want anything to do with him. Sometimes we can actually think that about Jesus, because sometimes we can think that we've done such bad things that Jesus, he wouldn't want to have us back uh, into his family. And maybe we feel a bit ashamed. I remember of a story of a of the leper. Now, if you know in the Bible, lepers were people who had this awful disease and everybody had to avoid them and they would avoid them. And any leper nearby came by somebody who hadn't got the leprosy, they would have to shout, unclean, unclean, stay away. And Jesus, and the Bible tells us of a leper who heard about Jesus, who saw Jesus healing people, who saw Jesus doing wonderful things and miracles. And this leper was watching from a distance hearing what Jesus was doing. And he was in a terrible state, his fingers and everything would all be wasting away with this awful disease. But then he thought, I wonder, I wonder if Jesus would heal me. He thought, he, well, he knew Jesus could heal him, but he thought he wouldn't want to heal me because I'm so bad, I'm so ugly, I, I'm sinful. I must have sinned for this disease to be upon me. That's what people used to think. They used to think if you were ill or really in a bad way, like with leprosy, it was because you'd done wrong. But he thought, this is my last chance. I'm worth, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to Jesus. He can only send me away and I'll be no different than now. But it's worth it. And sometimes it's true that people come to Jesus as a last resort. But nevertheless, no matter when we come, whether we're young or whether we're old, and sometimes towards the end of our lives. And sometimes we think, well, I can't come to Jesus now. I'm too old and I've wasted my life. Jesus says, come, come. So 
he went, he decided to go back home. But we know, as Jesus tells the story, the father who loved his son had been waiting for him. Maybe each day he would be praying, Father, bring my son, protect him, bring him home, bring him to his senses. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus in heaven now is praying for you and I. He is praying for us. He's praying that you will trust him, that you will come to him if you've never done so. Oh, there was a father. I like this picture. And when he saw his son, wow, the Bible tells us that instead of waiting there for his son to return, when he saw his son was on his way home, he ran down. There he is. There he is. He ran down towards him, flung his arms around him and welcomed him. How oh, man, it's good to see you. But of course, the son was feeling very ashamed of himself. Sorry, father, father. I've done so many things wrong. I'm so sorry. Please, can I come and, and be one of your servants? The father says, no, 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 look, you've come back. You've come back. Oh, it's so good. Come on, come home. And they went home and he says, look, give him the good clothes. Take off these rags he's wearing. Put on the beautiful clothes and look, go and kill the big cow, the fatted calf. <laughs> and we're going to have a celebration. So, wow, what a time. You can see it there. It was a tremendous celebration, and they really had a good time. Well, I want to tell you this little story. The story of a young man. He'd fallen out with his wife, and he'd been very unfaithful, and she'd thrown him out of the house because he had been selfish and proud and not cared about her. And it got very, very difficult. So she told him he had to go. So he went. And fortunately, this young man, he found himself meeting some good, godly Christians. And he went along to the church. And during that time, just like that prodigal son in our story, he realized that he had sinned. He realized how cruel and hard he'd been to his wife and to his family. And how he deserved his situation. And so he came. He, went, he came, what we call, to the altar. He went forward and gave his life to Jesus. And he accepted Jesus into his heart. Then with the friends, he told the, the people he was with his story. And they says, look, let's call him Johnny. They says, look, John, why don't you write to your wife? Tell her. What has happened to you? And tell her you've changed. And if she was willing to give you another chance. So that's what he did. He wrote this letter. But what he said, because he was a little bit reluctant about things, he says to his wife, he says, look, I've changed. I'm so sorry for the way I've treated you and the family. Look, is it possible? You could give me another chance. And he says, you know, the train goes past our house, past our fence in the backyard. He says, look, I'm going to be on a train. And he says, look, if you're willing to let me come back and show that I've changed, could you put a white blanket? On a fence, on the, on the on the clothesline. So when the train goes past, and I know it comes to the station, I'll see the blanket, and I know you're willing to give me a chance. So that's what he did. And as you can see here, he was on the train, getting very close to where his house was, and there was actually somebody sat across the way from him in the carriage. And he says to this carriage, he says, um, excuse me, he says, in a moment, we're going to be passing a house and uh, hope you won't mind. But could you tell me if there is a blanket hanging on the line, a, a white blanket? 
All right, said the guy, oh, we'll do that. So once again, he couldn't look. So he kind of closed his eyes and he kind of was praying. And then after they gone past the house, he asked the guy, he says, was there a white blanket? Well, the guy says, Oh, there wasn't just a, a, a white blanket. What? There were loads of blankets. Loads of them all hanging on the line. And the young man, Johnny, he realised that his wife was willing to receive him. And he returned home. Well, as I mentioned, Today, we are seeing some very sad things on our news, on our screens about refugees. Because of this war that is happening in the Ukraine, we're seeing thousands, up to about 3 million people at the moment, of people who've been forced out of their, ha forced out of their homes. Because as you can see, because of this bombing, that's all been taken place. Where houses have been totally destroyed, big flats destroyed when you see some of these things. No doubt like you, like me actually, you've probably been horrified and so sad. It's just awful to see thousands and thousands of people having their homes totally destroyed with nothing left. And it's very sad and I hope that you're praying for them. Well, you see pictures like this, people with nothing wondering where they can turn and of course what they are doing they are going to other countries nearby which are not under the war other countries like countries like poland and hungary and finland and some other of the what we call the european countries and many many people are coming here to germany and germany and and the great britain and scotland and it's amazing maybe they think just like we're hearing in our story, that everything is lost. It's in a hopeless situation. Maybe some of their friends have lost their lives. Maybe they think, will I survive? Will I live? Does anybody care? But one of the most beautiful things that we are seeing in the midst of this terrible things that are happening, we are seeing people as they get to the borders. Thousands of people are waiting for them to give them food, to give them clothing. Strangers willing to take in, as you can see here, just a couple of pictures which I put up, you know, people willing to open their homes and invite the refugees. So we see these pictures, I welcome refugees. And so all of these people, up now we say up to 3 million, it might even go to 5 million people, incredible. It's like the population of Scotland is only 5 million. But, wow, people are welcoming, giving them hope. And this is the wonderful news that the people uh, are waiting. And I know one of my friends is willing to do that too. And others just willing to help and do what they can to welcome those whose lives have been devastated. So I was... I wanted just to show you that because it's so important to realize what is going on and for us to pray and to be able to help if we can in whatever way. One of the things that happened in the story of the prodigal just at the end there was, yes, everybody was celebrating that their son had returned home. But the elder son, he didn't like it. He didn't like the fact that his brother now was getting all this attention, especially when he'd been so bad in what he had done. And he, he, he what we call it, he resented. He didn't like it. And he was to complain to his dad. No, this is not fair. It's not fair. You should be doing this for my brother. He's just been so awful. How can you do this? And the father said, look, son, everything I have is yours. You know, and it's right. Your son was lost, but now he's found again. He's come home. We must welcome him and celebrate. And don't let ourselves get envious or jealous 
or thinking about ourselves. And that's what we can think of as we think about what is happening today. Let's not think about ourselves and our own needs. But as Jesus says, let's think about the needs of others. And that's really what the father was telling the son and what Jesus meant with this story. Yes, we must come to Jesus. And it's the truth that when people come to Jesus, there is a celebration. In fact, the Bible tells us the celebration in heaven. The important things is that we will improve. And Jesus says, come, come to me, all you that are labor, heavy laden. I will give you rest. Jesus is welcoming us. We are a bit like that lost son. We're a bit like the refugees, you see, because here we have no continuing city. But Jesus wants to welcome us. And it, we come just as we are. And Jesus says these words. Here I am. I stand at the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. And I've got this other picture here. This is the picture, the famous picture of Jesus standing at the door. Meaning he's standing at the door of our lives. And in this picture of Helmut Hunt, there's no door handle on the outside. So it's up to you to open the door of your life. Jesus got a job for you. It's an important job. He wants you to welcome him. And they say, what can I do to help? Can I help what's going on in Ukraine? Can I welcome people? Can I help them in some way, even by praying? I know there are many, many prayer meetings going on at the moment, praying for the people of the Ukraine and at this awful war will stop and we must continue just to pray for that so there's a special job that god has for you as we heard early in the story about mary celessa you are part of the solution of this world at this time as this week has actually been celebrating the feast of purim and the feast of purim celebrates the fact that queen esther was willing to risk her life to go to the king and plead for her people who are going to be destroyed because of wicked Haman. And God heard the prayers of the people of Israel in those days. And Haman, instead of killing all the Jews, he himself was hanged on his own gallows. And the situation was turned around. But that was because Esther and her uncle Mordecai they honoured God and they stood for what God wanted and cared for the people, risking their lives. Sometimes it didn't take that, to risk our lives, to serve others. But the most important thing is that we're willing to give our life to the Lord Jesus. So as we close today, and again, there's this special verse where Jesus says, I'm here, I love you, and I welcome you. And I want you to come and just open your life afresh to me so I can use you. Yes. So you can truly be my friend. And I give you a place in heaven. So if you'd like to say this prayer with me today, again, it's just a prayer of opening our hearts to him. Maybe you've done this before. But again, it's always good just to invite Jesus to come, to fill us with his Holy Spirit and help us to follow him. So would you like to pray this prayer with me? Simply say, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. Once again, or now, Lord, I invite you to come into my life. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to serve you. Help me to help others and to tell them about you and to do what I can. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. Thank you. You will never cast me away. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks again for looking in. I trust that you'll have a, a good week. And. Uh, Oops, there we go. 
yeah. And let's continue as we're all doing just now, as we showed you those pictures, to pray for the people and the children in the Ukraine and that this war will stop. I was going to, I've got the time now, I was going to show you my friend Michaela. And Michaela, as I said, she's from Russia and she was hoping maybe it could still happen because she loves the Russian people, as I do too. And we'd love to go back to Russia as we've been doing for the last 25 years. And hopefully that God will open the doors once again to go back to that nation. We pray things will change, that once again, the Ukrainians and the Russians will be able to be friends as they are already relatives. And so that this conflict will cease as we say that and pray that in Jesus name. So that would be great. So God bless my friends in Russia, we miss you. Bye, everybody.